Hi guys, good evening. How are you? Hi Jose. Hi Ceci. Hi Kenya and hi Samara. How are you? Hi everyone. How was your day? Meh. <laughs> 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 that was a very good explanation for your day. Meh. <laughs> okay. Ceci, Kenya, Shamara, good evening. How was your how was your day? Hi, teacher. Hello, teacher. Hi. How was your day, girls? Was busy. Okay. What about you, Kenya? But everything is okay. Oh, okay, super. Okay, so remember guys that um, we were talking about, um, we had an assignment, right? I think. We had a little homework that we had to do related to indirect questions. So you had to pick a country around the world, any country or any place around the world and talk about it for a minute. But before we do that, I want to introduce a topic so you can actually see what the activity is going to be about. While you're presenting your topic, we are going to be asking you indirect questions uh, based on what we're going to see on the video right now of the explanation. And we're going to be asking you indirect questions related to the country that you're presenting. So be ready to receive questions like, what would you do? Uh, what can you do in that country? What can you buy? What can you eat? Uh, what do people like to do for fun? Okay, so indirect questions. So let's go ahead and start by looking at the topic, going over the topic, uh, checking out the presentation, the, the presentation regarding indirect questions. We're going to do the exercise and then we're going to start with the presentation, okay? So let's start with that. Just give me a minute while I launch. <laughs> okay, let me know if you listen to the video, okay? Hi everyone. By the end of this class, you'll be able to ask and answer indirect questions about a city or a new place that you might visit. For example, you'll be able to make the following questions. Could you tell me where the bank is? Do you know where the nearest ATM is? Do you know where the restrooms are? Can you tell me how often the buses run? Do you know where I can catch the bus? Before I begin to explain the grammar involved, what I would like to do is I would like to play an audio program which illustrates how this topic is used. And so what we're going to do at this point is we're going to listen to a conversation and we're going to listen to different questions that are asked about a city. Your task is to listen carefully and I will ask you questions at the end of the audio program. Excuse me, could you tell me where the nearest ATM is? There's one upstairs, across from the duty-free shop. Great. And do you know where I can catch a bus to the city? Sure. Just follow the signs for transportation. Okay. And can you tell me how often they run? They run every 20 minutes or Excuse me, it's me again. I'm sorry. I need some more information if you don't mind. Do you know how much the bus costs? It's $20. You can buy a ticket on the bus. $20? Wow. Well, a taxi costs about $50. Mm. Okay. And do you know where a bookstore is? I'd like to get a guidebook. Go upstairs and turn right. You'll see one on your left. Thanks very much. Have a nice day. You too. Let me present some structure at this time. What we want to do in this class is we want to learn how to change direct questions into indirect questions. And the reason that we want to do this is because it's a lot more polite to use indirect questions. So, for example, if I say, where's the bank? It's less polite than if I say, could you tell me where the bank is? And what we're going to learn is we're going to learn some rules that we're going to follow in changing this 
questions from direct to indirect questions. We're going to learn how to do it with the verb to be, and we're also going to learn how to change WH questions with either do or did. Now let's try to make sense of this whole concept here. What we want to do is we want to be able to turn direct questions into indirect questions. And let me propose a formula on how to do this, if you will. So we want to turn the question, where is the bank, into an indirect question. And the way that we'll do that is we will use some kind of polite model verb. So in this case, could you tell me? All right, and then this is going to be followed by a WH word. In this case, it happens to be where, but it could be any other WH word. For example, it could be what time, how often, when, etc. Any kind of WH word is what we're going to include here. So could you tell me, and in this case, I will ask where. This is going to be followed by the subject. So in this case, it happens to be the bank, where the bank, and then finally, we're, we're going to include the verb. So in this case, could you tell me where the bank is? And just so that we follow the pattern that I'm proposing here, I'm going to go ahead and play with the colors for now. Now, let's try to make sense of that second question that you see there towards the bottom. Where are the restrooms? That's the direct question. What we want to do is we want to turn that question into an indirect question. And you can do that in different ways. For example, you can do that by asking, do you know? Okay, or using another model verse. So in this case, I'm going to propose in using this um, polite way of doing it. Okay, so I'm basically just going to copy that so you can see that it's the, basically the same pattern that we're following. We have, could you tell me? And that follows a WH word. So in this case, where? Okay, so the subject is what's going to change now. And instead of saying, the bank, we're not going to say the restrooms. And then it's going to follow the verse. So in this case, it happens to be that since restrooms are plural, then we're going to use the verb to be are instead of the verb to be is. And um, well, um, the phrase here could change, as I mentioned, just like we have it there on the book. Do you know where the restrooms are? And basically, we're going to follow the same pattern for the questions that you see towards the bottom. The only difference here is that we're no longer using the verb to be. We're using other verbs. And we could be talking about the present. We could be talking about the past. And that's what it means by either do or did. So let's try to make sense of those as well. So in this case, it's a similar pattern, if you will. How often do the buses leave? Okay, what we want to do is we want to be able to change this question into an indirect question. And again, we can use the same pattern that you see here. So for, I'm just going to go ahead and copy this previous one that you see there so that you can see that uh, nothing changes or just a few things will change. So in this case, could you tell me, I mean, that's similar thing. Could you tell me? And we're going to use uh, the uh, WH question. So in this case, it's going to be how often. All right. And then that is followed by the subject. So in this case, the subject is the buses. And then that is followed by the verb. And so in this case, it's no longer the verb to be, but now it's the verb leave. How often do the buses leave? Could you tell me how often the buses leave? Let's try to make sense of the other questions that you see there towards the bottom. So in this case, what we want to do is we want to use a polite way of asking. So you can ask in the form of, could you tell me? Do you know? Can you tell me? Um, and then it just repeats itself with do you know. So in this case, we're going to use do you know. That's the second question there. Do you know what time the bank opens? So let me go ahead and write that example now. Do you know? That follows the WH word. So in this case, is what time? Then that follows the subject. Mm -hmm. 
And one thing that I want you to notice here is that in our indirect question, we remove the auxiliary verbs. So we don't include does or do. It no longer exists in our indirect question. Do you know what time the bank opens? And the other thing that happens here is that the verb in this case will need to have an S. And that's because since we don't have an auxiliary verb and the subject of the verb is singular and we're talking in the present, therefore we need an S as you can see there. And uh, well, let's do the last one there. Uh, what, um, when did flight 566 arrive? So in that case, um, the question could be, do you know? And the WH word is when. And uh, the subject is flight 566. And in this case, we have to change the verb to the past because we're not, we're not using an auxiliary. Uh, like we're using the auxiliary, when did fly 566 arrive? In this case, this verb is in the present, but that's because we're using the auxiliary did. So in this case, since we removed that auxiliary verb that I mentioned, we need to change that verb to the past form. The last thing that I would like for you to do now is to practice the concepts that we talked about. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pose some questions here. These are common questions that people ask whenever they visit another country, another city, a place you're not familiar with. What are those questions? For example, how much do taxes cost? And remember that our goal is to change these direct questions into indirect questions. And you're going to follow this formula that I gave you. So how much do taxes cost? I'm going to stop there because the idea with the exercise with the cities or and the countries and the places is the following. For when you present, we want to ask you, all of us, uh, nine participants are, are connected. We should be asking you indirect questions like, for example, if you're talking about Japan, let's say my topic is Japan today. So you should be asking me like, do you know, okay, um, do you know how much a taxi costs, for example? Could you tell me? How much a ta uh, does a taxi cost? Or um, can you tell me um, what's the most popular city in Japan or the most popular place inside Japan? Could you tell me um, where could I get a map or where could, does Japan have museums? What type of food do people like to eat? Could you tell me what type of food do people like to eat in Japan? So the idea is for us to practice indirect questions with a direct questions okay so that's the idea of this exercise um just give me a minute it just dropped me up again so that's the idea with this exercise so um using indirect questions to ask about the city or the place uh one of you is presenting in the moment if it's machu picchu let's ask questions about machu picchu but using indirect doing it in an indirect way okay so who wants to get started first? Or should I pick? Who's, who wants to be the first one presenting? Who's okay. ready? I ain't ready. Okay, Jose, go ahead. The screen is all yours. Okay, I choose London. Okay, do you have a, a picture or do you, would you like for me to share a picture? I can help you with the picture. Okay, help me with the picture. Okay, London. What part in London? Uh, the Big Bang, the Tower Club. Okay. Tower. Uh huh. Okay, let's go ahead and look I, I for chose, Big Bang. I chose. I chose. I chose London because uh, uh, I always wanted to be in London, and is the uh, uh, Henry V was the king of London from. 1413 until his death in 1422 he is a historical character and also London is the house of my favorite literature character Sherlock Holmes ah okay mm -hmm. <laughs> and I read a lot of Arthur Conan Doyle mm -hmm. and also uh, I want to travel someday in the red buses the two level red buses mm -hmm. I'm sure that everybody wants 
have seen the red buses of two levels who they are known their name is root master and the buses the, the buses names the are buses. root master okay root oh. master also a red telephones box and yeah, at least i think this is historical topics that i want to travel to london someday and that's it okay guys ask ask Jose questions about London so we can answer them together and that way we can learn, huh? Prices, indirect questions. One indirect question for each one. Sassy, you can start. Mm -hmm. Cecilia, are you there? Or Claudia, or Eduardo, or Juan Carlos, or Karina, or Masi, Kenya and Masi. One of you have to ask indirect questions. Uh huh. Tell me about London so we can ask Jose. I London is interesting uh, country. Uh, people. In people eh, mm, um, amable, amable, nice, um, nice, nice, people, mm -hmm. nice people. So it would be if it's in the red, Juan Carlos, then it would be could you tell me if people in London are nice? Like, could you tell me if people in London are nice, for example? That would be your question. Mm -hmm. Okay. What do you think, uh, Jose? Is uh -huh. and London lives uh, a lot of people from other countries, and the English really are cold, like goldfish, silent. Uh, but the other people, like the Africans and the Nordics, are really strange. I know people who us travel to London before and tell me how there are strange people because they are silent and don't talk so loud and they're, they're very polite, well, a lot of polite, mm -hmm. okay. I think. Okay, could be, yeah, actually even when they curse or they're saying bad words, a British people from the UK, you don't know if they're saying bad words or not because they say it in a so polite way that you don't know if they're mad or not they curse in a very polite way that you're like is that a bad word yeah he's actually insulting you and you feel that he's just <laughs> telling you something but actually they're insulting you so that's how polite they are okay ceci you're going to ask him something tell me um do you know how much uh, the flies cost okay um, let me remind like I two thousand euros Really? Like 2,000 euros? It's like 2,000 euros. I have, I have a friend who lives in Barcelona and travel a year and <laughs> tell me it's like 2,000 thousand euros. Wow. Okay. Oh, sorry, $2,000 from El Salvador to London. Okay, $2,000. Wow, that's very expensive. Uh -huh. from, from another country to Europe, is it's not it's unexpected. It's cheap. Uh -huh. you, take the, you take the train, the air train, the mm -hmm. cost is 10 euros, 10 euros, mm -hmm. it's like $15. Okay, now the red buses, going back to the red buses, could you tell me what's the price or the fare for a red bus fit, uh, ride? You have the, the answer on the image. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, I don't really know. You have it on, uh, my, on my screen, the answer. Uh, 1.50 is pounds. Uh, yeah, pounds. Euros, I don't know what. Maybe it's like a dollar and 50 pounds. It's just the minimum. But if you want to use the bus the entire day, it can cost you up to four, four, 50, four uh, pounds and 50 cents. That's how much it can cost you a day. And also, they have a, a, a way to pay. Mm -hmm. you, you need a card like this, it comes here. Mm -hmm. That's and called you, a 
this one. Oyster court. Oyster okay. court, of course. And the day travel card. Or ticket. You pay the, the, the driver, he, he gives you a ticket. So this is an oyster card. I guess it's like the one we use with Citrams here. And this is how it would look like. Yeah, like the cards and you just slide it. And that way it gives you access to, uh -huh, to this. And also you can pay. You can pay cash and the driver gives you a ticket, a paper. Okay. Ticket. What would be the fare to go to uh, Big Ben? What do you think? Could you tell me what would, what's the fare to enter or access the Big Ben? Mm, actually, I don't know. I think, I think in the Big Ben because it's a beautiful clock tower. <laughs> mm -hmm. Interesting. And it looks, I think it looks like uh, the, the Notre Dame, the Church of Notre Dame. I, it's interesting kind. things about London. Interesting places in London is the Big Ben. Also, there's like a round wheel. Do you know what that is called? It's called the eye, the London eye. I don't know if you have ever heard it. No. Have you ever seen this one, the London eye? Ah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. And do you know that every movement going up is super slow? And actually, people rent it for New Year's and to actually be, to head the top of the the circle to be at the top of the circle by midnight to see all the fireworks <laughs> they rent that and the price is like the super bowl it can you know you can actually start you know who gives more right like who gives more depending who gives more that's the person that actually wins that uh -huh. seat to be all the way at the top in the london eye just for you to have an idea this is kind of like i'll show you like a quick video of the london eye for you guys to see it okay uh, this is pretty much the london on in another topic or my mm -hmm. favorite character, Sherlock Holmes. Actually, the, the address of Sherlock Holmes at six is 221B in Baker Street. Mm -hmm. And the address really exists. Really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Nice. That's interesting. Interesting. And that's it. That's it. So, that okay. Thank you. Talking about London, talking about the London Eye, this is how the gondols would look like in the London Eye, see? A lot of people think it's like a roller coaster, like a wheel, but it's actually, it goes super slow. So it can take you many hours to go from one side of the city to the other side of the city because it actually gives you a full sight of the entire London city, right? That's the reason of, of it being here. Let me show you just a quick video, but just a quick for you to see how slow it can go up. I think it's this one. Are you able to see it, all of you? Yeah, I'm sure. Can you listen to the audio? No. Constructed using yeah. parts from all over right Europe, now. this 450-foot-tall Ferris wheel has 32 air-conditioned pods, each representing one of the 32 boroughs of London. Smart travelers avoid lines by booking their tickets online and picking them up at one of the self-service kiosks. So 25 can, guests at a time line up to board the capsules for a 30-minute ride. Interactive guides built into the capsule walls will identify what you're seeing on the horizon. The ride is so smooth you hardly feel like you're moving. But once you reach the top, well, let's just say the view is unbeatable. So that's the highest point. It takes you 30 minutes to go all the way around. <coughs> and that's the highest point of it. If you were able to appreciate, you can hardly tell if it's moving or not but it's moved super slow. You can even feel if it's moving or not. 
It's like if you were suspended in the in the sky, <coughs> in the air. Sorry. With the iconic skyline of London laid out before you, it's not uncommon to feel like you're on top of the world. Big Ben and the Palace of Westminster, St. Paul's Cathedral, Westminster Abbey, and so many more. So that's like the most popular part of London. That's the Big Ben. That's do you have a cathedral on this side and the palace on this side too, or the palace Queen? Of the, Westminster. Yeah. Uh huh. And the cathedrals like on this side, if I'm not mistaken. Those people don't have to be afraid of heights. <laughs> <laughs> They're not afraid of heights at all. But I think it's a very nice experience though, because imagine you get to you get a glimpse of the entire city, right? Mm -hmm. I don't remember the name of the river. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> okay. No, but thank you, Jose. Good. It was an interesting topic. Thank you very much. Super. Okay, you're welcome. Next one. Let's see. Cecilia, are you ready for your presentation? Or Kenya, Masi, Alex, Eduardo, or Juan Carlos? Who's ready for the presentation on your, on your country or place? I'm ready. Okay, super. You want to share your screen or you want me to help you with a, with an image? Can you, can you help me? Sure. Um, uh, Italy. A specific place in Italy? No, in general. <laughs> okay. Okay. Whenever you are ready. I'm just going to mute the video, that way you can talk, okay? Okay. Uh, well, Italy is a beautiful country. There are all places that you can visit. For example, um, well, uh, Italy has uh, 20 regions, but the more popular are uh, Sicilia, uh, Roma, and Venezia. Um, for example, in Roma, um, there are many places to visit. For, for example, El Coliseo, um, there are a lot of museums, church, and in Venezia, uh, is known as the city of the canals of light and light. Um, for example, El Gran Canal in Vaporetto, mm -hmm. uh, San Marcos Square, uh, a lot of cathedral and Rialto Bridge. And in Sicilia, um, for example, in Taormina, uh, is a center tourist. And in uh, Agrigento, uh, is the Estatua del Icono Caído. That's all. Okay. Super. Could you tell me um, how much it is to travel from El Salvador to Italy, please? Well, for um, the flights cost around uh, 700. Um, and when you are in, uh, you're in Italy, you mm -hmm. can travel in different regions in a train. Or buses. Uh huh. Oh, okay. Anybody else wants to ask questions? I have one question. Okay, go ahead. Uh, can, could you tell me how about the weather is? Um, it's a cool weather. Um, but uh, it, Italy has a characteristic that because in each regions. Uh, you can feel the different weather, for example, uh, because, well, because in, in um, some regions, um, there are a lot of or, uh, beaches, so the weather is hot. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Anybody else wants to ask questions about Italy? With indirect questions, could you tell me? I have a question, teacher. Super, go ahead. Um, 
Cecilia, could you tell me what is the national coin in Italy? Mm, interesting. <clears throat> interesting question. If you don't know, that's fine. Don't worry, okay? We can find out together. It's okay. If no, you I, I really, I don't know, but um, search right now. Mm -hmm. I'm Italy going to search national coin or currency. You could say Italy, oh, lira, currency. euro. Lira. It's actually the euro. No. Actually, it's a euro, but mm -hmm. uh, in the past time, I was ah. a lira. Lira, Italian lira. Uh huh. Okay, both, I guess. You could use both or just euros right now. Like us with colones and then dollars, right? It's pretty much, uh-huh. Okay, super. Anything else? Any other question? Anybody else? No more questions? Uh, I, uh -huh. Sure, Juan Carlos, go ahead. I, I, I was traveled to Guatemala is a and is very nice. Mm -hmm. The Guatemala, uh, Puerto Escuintla. You went to Escuintla. Uh, this, this, this be correct. Okay. Is uh, the people very nice? In Escuintla, Guatemala. Yes. Okay. Is is uh, la beach is is beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's Quintla is not a city, it's the beach. Yes. Ah, okay. Let's look it up. Um, in, in city city is Quintla, uh, the capital is um uh, is um, uh, um, three, uh, Quintra. This Quintra, is Esquintla, Guatemala. Guatemala, the one that you, yes. this is what you were In talking the city about. Capital. The city capital. It's the city's capital. Uh huh. Okay. It's Quintra. Uh -huh. Okay. I, 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 me, I, the city. You visit it, uh huh? I visit it. Um, um, it is is uh, it uh, is uh, carne asada. Allí. Que ahí estuve Roasted, gozando. Roasted meat, uh huh? Allí estuve comiendo un plato de carne asada con okay. ellos. Nice. This is Esquinta. Ah, so you were saying maybe yes. Playa en Puerto San Jose Esquinta, maybe they have this yes. famous beach. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh huh. Okay. Uh, I peop uh, a people is very nice. Okay. I have never been to Esquinta, Guatemala. Maybe I have been to. Uh, I don't know, Esquipulas and the regular Guatemala. I want to go in Guatemala to a place called Hobitenango. Have you ever heard about it? No, I no visit. You have not visited this place? Which is like a mm. Hobbit place in, in Honduras? I'm sorry, in Guatemala? No. Okay. Uh, solo bit, uh, a a bit. Okay. How uh, could you tell me how much is a ticket to Guatemala from El Salvador? How much is it? How much is a ticket from El Salvador to Guatemala? Can you tell me? Could you tell me, please? Mm -hmm. Juan Carlos? No lo entendí, teacher, perdón, no lo entendí. Ah, ¿Cuánto cuesta? ¿Cuál es el precio de un ticket eh, de aquí? ¿Cuánto eh, cuesta el ticket? El ticket es one, one night. Eh, 
Van, van, van nine. 18. 18 dollars. 18 dollars. 18 dollars. Eh, My bus. I arrive. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. Because like if you were to take a regular bus, it takes you, it costs like $50, right guys? That's how much it is to go to Guatemala. Or oh, $25. How much mm -hmm. is a ticket to Guatemala? Could you tell me guys? Do you know? I don't know. I don't know. ¿Cuánto cuesta? No, ¿Cuánto cuesta un ticket a Guatemala? 18 oh, dólares. 18? 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. Okay. 18. Arrive. Uh -huh. Arrive. Okay. I didn't know. I didn't know. Okay. Super. Ahí pasó un amigo mío. <laughs> Okay, super. Oh, my thank brother. You. Okay. Well, thank you, Juan Carlos, for the presentation. Thank you, Ceci, also for the presentation. Um, who goes next? We have missing Alex, Eduardo, Kenya, or Masi. I'm ready, teacher. Okay. Do you want me to project the video or do you have the presentation? Could you, could you help me, please? Sure. Tell me what's the name of the, the place. Mm -hmm. Moray, Lake Canada. Moray. No, ah, Moray. Okay. Like this one. Mm -hmm. This one. Okay, there you go. And <clears throat> well, I talking about Moraine Lake, Canada. The mm -hmm. Moraine Moraine Lake is a mount and a lake located in Bath National Park in Alberta from Canada. Mm -hmm. The lake has a surface area of fifty hectares. Mm -hmm. The lake being glacier fit does not reach its Crest until nine to late in June. When it is full, it reflects um, a distinct shade of azure blue in the lake. And, nice eye. Nice yeah. eye. It looks like and, an amazing place to visit. Super. Yeah, and I would like oh, yeah. to visit this lake because mm -hmm. it's beautiful and with my family and my best friend oh just that <laughs> questions ask her indirect questions uh-huh would you tell me you participate i had one Sure, go ahead. Shoot. Uh, Kenya, right? No. No. Masi, Masi. What's your name? Masi, yeah, Masi. <laughs> Masi, could, could you tell me what sort of animals are there? Um, I remember that a uh, bear. A um, grizzly bear. Yeah. Uh, um, Benado, I don't remember in English. Deer? <laughs> deer. Uh, yeah, deer. Like John Deere, the boots. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny Deere, the boots. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. Deers and bears. There's like many other animals, if I'm not mistaken. They have the caribous. They have like the ones that have like, you know, like the big uh, thorns, like like if Santa Claus deers uh -huh, with the big <laughs> look at the color of the lake looks beautiful it's yeah. impressive it's impressive the color of it light blue sky pretty much uh, also they have caribous they have beavers like Justin Beaver no beavers <laughs> the mammals they no. have beavers they have caribous they have many walrus. walrus so many animals uh-huh 
they have a, a, a whole variety. By the way, in Canada, something an interesting fact about Canada is that Canada borders three different oceans. You know, Canada. So due to the fact that they border three different oceans, yeah, they have access to the, you know, to the majority of fish that live underwater. So they have access to all sorts of fish that you cannot imagine because they have three different oceans. So three different, that's a bear, see, there's a bear. Three different oceans. So that's the reason why they have a lot of fish variety. So it's interesting fact about Canada. Okay, oh, nice, interesting place. Thank you, thank you, Masi, for your Thanks. presentation. Okay, next, who's next? Alex or Eduardo is missing. I read the teacher. Ah, okay, Kenya, go ahead. Uh, I choose Machu Picchu. Would you want me to share a video? Yes, can you help me? Sure, of course. Let's go ahead and check out Machu Picchu. Okay. Um, okay. Um, I like it Peru very much. Um, I wish to visit this country one day. Uh, Machu Picchu is located in the Eastern Cordillera of Southern in Peru. Mm -hmm. uh, a day of tour to get to Machu Picchu, you take a bus for two hours from okay. Cusco mm -hmm. I tumble and then take a train for 30 minutes. Uh, on that tour, you will see much beautiful place, many mountains, rivers, animals, and trees. Mm -hmm. uh, once in Machu Picchu, mm -hmm. you will see the classical Inca style with polished dry stone walls. Some of the most important remains of this wonder are the Intihuatana the temple of the sun mm -hmm. and the room of the three windows. In addition to the rooms and structures, you will see many animals, uh, condor and dino, also as andinos, llamas, mm -hmm. and you will take many pictures of these Amazon flames. Okay. How much is a trip to Machu Picchu from El Salvador? Uh, the cost. Mm -hmm. How much is it? Could you tell me? Um, the cost is subtle. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Let's find out. Don't worry if you don't know. How much is that cost? Do you have an idea, guys, to go to South America? No, teacher. The fly cost um, now is around uh, $700. Mm -hmm. $700? Wow. Okay. Well, maybe right now it's not going to give me answers because of the coronavirus, but... <laughs> They're not selling tickets, but just an approximate, maybe, uh, like maybe it's pretty much like going to Colombia, right? Pretty much the same. Going to South America, South America, the prices go or vary, or they're like similar, right? 
I guess. 700 or 800 dollars. Okay, super. Okay. Could you tell me what do people eat in Peru? Could you me? tell me? Uh -huh. What do people eat in Peru? Could you eat. tell me? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Could you tell me what people eat in Peru? Do you know? What's like their typical food? Do you know? Ah, okay. ceviche. Ah, okay. They like ceviche? Wow. And what is it? Uh -huh, and they also, okay. What is a ceviche peruano? What does it have? What are some of the elements? Is it fish or is it a different type of ceviche? Fish, uh, onion. Mm -hmm. And many others. Okay. Well, thank you so much for your presentations. It was very interesting. Now it's time for me to present, okay? And my place is, ton, ton, ton. I'm going to, I'm going to show you a country in a different way. One of, and this is a strategy that you can use to learn English too. I like to learn through fun facts. So today we're gonna be learning a little bit about Japan. I didn't know anything about Japan. So we're gonna know um, things that you did not know about Japan, okay? So I'm gonna show you things that you didn't know about Japan and then you can ask me indirect questions, okay? The video, it's 10 minutes. I'm just gonna show you part of it because we're almost running out of time. But this is my topic and then you make my questions, okay? And just give me From a all across the world, 20, Doll Village. I'm going to show you from the Land. beginning. Japan is known as the land of the rising sun, but it could also be known as the land of singing toilets or the country of the blue traffic light. There are so many things that make it a whole other world. Get ready to explore. One square watermelons. They were invented back in the 70s by a graphic designer to fit compactly in the fridge and be cut more easily. Japanese farmers grow them in special containers to get the shape. Since they're pretty expensive, people don't buy them as food, but rather as a decorative item. 2. Ramen Noodles Bath The Unison Spa Resort in Hakone offers its guests the pretty unique experience of splashing around in a vat of pork soup and ramen noodles. While this may sound crazy to many people, many, the Japanese believe that soaking in such a bath is good for the skin because a broth made of pork is rich in collagen. 3. Bizarre flavors of Kit Kat Chili pepper, wasabi, sweet potato, grilled corn, soybean, salt watermelon, mango, green tea, and that's only a short list of the Kit Kat flavors you can try in Japan. Which one would you try? Let me know down in the comments. Fake food. Specialists make this kind of food from plastic or wax, and it looks just as delicious as the real one. Many restaurants use fake food to display their popular dishes in the windows and attract hungry clients. Usually, these replicas cost much more than the dishes they imitate. 5. Rabbit Island Back in the 40s, scientists brought a number of rabbits to Okonoshima Island to do some tests. However, later on, the animals were freed and started to multiply. Now the island is full of them and attracts a lot of tourists. Purakura Machines Taking photos in a booth is nothing new, but Japan added its own exciting twist to this experience. Their photo booths, called Purakura, allow you to edit photos right on the spot, adding different backgrounds, funny stickers, or writings. Also, you can send the pictures to your cell phone, or perhaps your toilet, if, you know, you have Wi-Fi in there. You might never have to leave. 7. People pushers. Subways and train stations get really overcrowded during rush hour. That's why the station staff and part-time workers have to perform the routine procedure of pushing people inside trains to fit in as many passengers as possible before the doors close. Number 8. Umbrella parking lot. 
Before going inside a building, you can park and lock your umbrella just like you do with your bike. Now you can be sure no one will take it, and you won't make a puddle on the floor if your umbrella is wet. Many government buildings, offices, and hotels have this sort of umbrella rack. I'm going to stop there and now I want you guys to ask me a question regarding Japan based on the short portion of the video that you saw. Mm -hmm. I have one. Yes, tell me, ask me. How, how much it costs uh, ramen, a ramen soup? A ramen soup? Um, Price. I have no idea, but we can find out. Because the ramen is delicious. <laughs> <laughs> but what I can tell you is, I'll, I'll tell you a fun fact. Un dato curioso. Ramen soup price in Japan. Oh, I forgot. In. I'll tell you in a bit. It's 600 to 1,200 yen. How much is a yen? One yen in dollars. I got ten dollars. Uh, I think. <gasps> really? I don't know. <laughs> I just Let's see. Use, use. How how much is a yen in dollars currency? Oh, it's less than a dollar. Like a dollar. So it's almost like a. So it's like oh, it's very, it's very expensive because it's almost like a dollar, almost point ninety three oh. states dollars. Okay. Uh huh. So it's. That's what it costs. So it's very expensive. Ramen soup price in Japan. Uh huh. So it's six hundred. So it's super expensive. And one thousand two hundred yen per bowl. Wow. I don't have the money <laughs> <laughs> for buy. I have heard that life in Japan Stop. is super expensive. <laughs> Very expensive. But what I can tell you a fun fact about Japan soup and ramen, if you are invited by somebody to have soup, you have to do that. You have to do that sound, even though people here tell you that's bad habit. That's not very good. So the thing is that in Japan, if you don't do this, you are telling the cook or the chef or the person who invited you to soup that you don't like it. So if you want to show your appreciation, you have to you have to do that sound when you are having soup to show that you like the soup and to show appreciation. Yeah, that's fact. true. That's true. It's interesting. Interesting fact. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this uh, presentation class. Um, it's good that you guys practice to your speaking skills, okay, through speaking activities too. I will see you tomorrow with another topic and I hope you guys have a blessed night, okay? Thank you for joining as always being so responsible, okay? okay. Thank you, teacher. Thank Good night, you. everybody. Thank you, Jose. Thank you, Thanks. everybody. Bye, guys. Good night, everybody. Bye. See you tomorrow.